Hello to all you conservational minded uh, viewers. Uh, this video is a compliment to the post on MKA Pub titled Wildlife Extinction, Critical and Man-Made. The title of our blog is Nature's Photo, Engaging Nature with Articles, Discussion, and Photography. However, at least two of our initial posts will provide a strong conservational theme, and that's okay, because our natural world is encountering a serious extinction threat. This post presents a couple of major points. Firstly, it introduces the concept of background extinction rate in order to illustrate the critical nature of extinction. And secondly, it illustrates that extinction trend is man-made. So in order to provide more visual aids as we discuss these issues, let's transfer the camera from me to the computer screen. The dodo was a large flightless bird that inhabited the island of Mauritius in the mid-eastern Indian Ocean. Tangible and detailed accounts of the bird are restricted due to its limited exposure. The cause of the dodo's demise is similar to those that impact extinction today. The island inhabitants aid the birds, but that seems to have been a minor contribution because the population was always scant. Like most newly discovered lands, the explorers decided to plunder its resources. More specifically, they chose to cut most of the forest. Invasive species are considered by scientists today to be the second leading cause of extinction. So when rats, cats, and pigs were introduced, the same thing that happens today occurred. The bird's ground-dwelling, nesting habits, and their lack of flight certainly made them vulnerable to the aggressive invasives. So one of God's unique creatures encountered their final destiny in the latter part of the 17th century with the last reported sighting around 1662. The great auk was another large bird about three feet tall that resembled penguins despite the fact that they were unrelated. They lived throughout the northern Atlantic from prehistoric times. As a matter of fact, they were a known food staple for the Neanderthal people, which lends credit to their historical durability. However, the bird's destiny of extinction was realized somewhere around the mid-19th century. The great auk's extinction was again due to man's reckless harvesting habits and inadequate conservation. The offending people killed the birds for food and plucked their feathers to stuff pillows. Unfortunately, they also harvested the birds' large eggs for food and as collector's items. Additionally, the fact that the bird laid one single egg made the harvesting practice devastating. By the mid-19th century, another unique bird was considered extinct. The passenger pigeon once inhabited the entire eastern half of North America in numbers that measured in the billions. They migrated and nested in huge flocks that were said to have shaded the earth from the sun as they flew over. Like the great auk, indigenous people considered them a food staple for thousands of years without degrading their numbers. The extinction of the passenger pigeon is considered by most scientists to be one of the most egregious examples of man's lack of restraint and inability to conserve the natural world. The fact that the birds migrated and nested in huge flocks made them vulnerable to predation. A single shotgun blast into a migrating flock would bring down five to eight birds. Frequently, people would go so far as to cut the trees that held the nesting flocks to harvest the nestlings. Additionally, deforestation played a role in the birds' demise. That trend deprived the birds of nesting and food habitat. The last known passenger pigeon was known as Martha, and she died in 1914 in the Cincinnati Zoo. As a well-publicized incident, Martha, at last and too late, triggered the collective remorse for the unnecessary and abusive loss of another of nature's beautiful creations. The Carolina parakeet was one of two parrot species indigenous to the United States. Small and green with yellow and red heads, they inhabited the eastern and central parts of the country. Due to their seed consumption habits, many people considered the birds to be pests 
and, de- and killed them indiscriminately. The last known living specimen of the Carolina parakeet was named Incas, I-N-C-A-S, and he died in the Cincinnati Zoo in 1918. As with other examples, deforestation was considered a contributing factor to their demise. Additionally, their flocking habits made them vulnerable to intentional slaughter. However, due to the sudden disappearance of the birds, some scientists speculate that a poultry disease might have contributed to their extinction. Despite the extinction loss in the bird world, birds are not the animal class most impacted by extinction. That honor goes to amphibians. Scientists estimate that 120 to 150 species of amphibians have gone extinct since 1980. It seems that the culprit behind these extinctions is an infectious disease known as chiridiomycosis, which is caused by an aquatic fungi known as BD. The disease attacks the amphibian skin, which is a vital organ for that animal class. The impact of this disease upon the amphibian world is often referred to as a plague. Some amphibians are more resistant to the infections than others. However, those with a degree of resistance might also be carriers of the condition. So in the new globalized economy where animals and pets are transported from one part of the world to another by ship, the disease is easily uh, transported to numerous vulnerable species. Another post on mkapub.com titled Invasive Species Assault on Florida provides a good illustration of the impact of invasives. One interesting fact emphasized in the noted post is that most scientists consider invasive species to be the second leading cause of the current mass extinction. Incidentally, if you're viewing this video on YouTube, a link to that website is listed below. One other additional factor that is suspected of influencing the distribution of BD is climate change. A warmer and wetter environment appears to facilitate the fungi growth that causes the disease. Incidentally, the display photo for this section is a, uh, in this video, is a photograph of the Cuban tree frog, which is an invasive species that came into Florida by way of cargo ship early in the 20th century. They have slowly extended their range northward into north central Florida as they decimate and prey upon the native tree frog population. So again, we see where a new world is making life quite complicated for our animal friends. Scientists compare current extinction rates with what they call background rates. The background rates are the average rate of extinction over an extended geological time. One way of expressing the background rate is in what scientists call million species years. In other words, one would expect one out of one million species to go extinct each year. Expressed differently, if there was only one species, it would be expected to go extinct within one million years. A guy named David Bialo, writing for the Scientific American, specified that out of 9,975 bird species, 154 had gone extinct over the last 500 years. That data translates into 26 extinctions yearly, or 26 times the average background rate. Furthermore, and after writing the article, Bialo made the comment that bird extinction estimates may be too low. Unfortunately, that data he's talking about applies only to birds, and the most endangered class of animal is currently amphibians. When comparing amphibian extinction extinction rates to the background standards, their extinction rate would be 211 times greater. If you consider endangered amphibians, along with the extinctions, the extinction rate compared to the background rate jumps somewhere between 25 and 45,000 times the background rates. Those rates leave little doubt that the current rate of extinction justifies the title of mass extinction. 
Within the scientific community, the casual uh, factors behind the current extinction rate are clear cut. Since deforestation, urban and commercial development can be uh, all be categorized as man-made factors, there's little room for argument that the current extinction rates are not man-made. When humans move in, there's less space for other living organisms. Additionally, no rational argument can object to the fact that invasive species is the second leading cause of extinction, and that is also human-made. Climate change and ocean acidification also take a prominent place on the stage of human impact. Climate change definitely accounts for one and possibly two recent extinctions. However, many species listed as endangered have their predicaments nested under the category of climate change. Okay, looking back over this subject, many people living today are totally unfamiliar with the dodo, the great auk, passenger pigeon, or the Carolina parakeet. After all, most humans living today have never seen any of these birds. However, the rate of their extinction is critical. And even more critical is the rate of the amphibian extinction. Unfortunately, that same trend also afflicts the mammalian class of animals. Today's extinction rate compared to the background standards paints an alarming uh, picture. Now, even more alarming is man's inability to respond to it. Not only are many people unfamiliar with this trend, many are indifferent, and there's a whole group of people out there who would cover it up for financial gain. In the history of mankind, there has never been a more threatening historical trend that more clearly illustrates man's incompetence. Today's extinction is, is critical, and it is man-made. In closing, if this subject is interesting to you, let me recommend a good read for you titled uh, The Sixth Extinction by Elizabeth Colbert. Ms. Colbert does an excellent job of research on this book. It's sound academically and scientifically, and I think you'll find that it will further your knowledge of this subject tremendously. Uh, if you're viewing this video on YouTube, you'll find a link to our website, and on our website, you'll find a link to the book. Okay, folks, I enjoyed it. Have a good one.